Then let's look at example 1.2. Now you'll see a lot of the information in this example is the same as example 1.1. I've just changed a few things so that we can cover principles that were not addressed in the previous example. Thanos Limited manufactures two products in a joint process. During May 20X4, 500 units of raw material were processed at a joint cost of 600,000 Rand. One unit of raw material yields 4 litres of SM and 6 litres of BW. So, so far that information is all the same. However, now you are told the joint production process also yields 0.5 litres of CA, which is considered to be a byproduct. And please just note, it's 0.5 litres for every one unit of raw material. We are also now told that all products incur further processing before being sold as finished products. All right, so in the previous example, the two joint products could either be sold at the split-off point or processed further. Now all products will be processed further. So let's go and input all of this information onto our diagram. We know that 500 units of raw material were processed at a joint cost of 600,000 Rand. We also know that one unit of raw material yields 4 litres of SM, so that means 2,000 litres of SM were produced. One unit of raw material also yields 6 litres of BW, so 3,000 litres of BW were produced. However, now we also have a byproduct. So the joint production process also yields 0.5 litres of CA, and this is for every one unit of raw material input. So we need to just multiply that by the 500 units that were input. So that gives us 250 litres of CA were produced. And CA is considered to be a byproduct. Now all of the products are processed further before being sold. You are given the selling price after further processing. So we just need to include that for CA, it's 50 Rand, and we have further processing costs after the split-off point as well. So let's just include that in the diagram. You are then also given opening inventory at the beginning of May in litres and in rands and closing inventory at the end of May in litres. So in this example, production is not going to equal sales because we have opening and closing inventory. So we already know the number of litres produced. We performed that calculation on our diagram. We know the number of litres in opening and closing inventory so we can calculate the number of litres that were sold. So let's perform that calculation. Alright, so if we are trying to calculate the number of litres sold, we are going to start with opening inventory. We will then add production and deduct closing inventory. And that will give us the number of litres sold. Alright, and we have all of this information, guys. Opening inventory was provided in the question, so there's no opening inventory for CA, but we do have opening inventory for SM and for BW. We have closing inventory for all three products, so you can just include both of those amounts in your calculation. And production comes from the diagram above. So you can just bring those quantities down.
and you can calculate the number of liters sold. Joint process costs are allocated to products using the net realizable value method. So remember, we need to allocate the joint production cost to joint products. So the joint production cost will be allocated to SM and to BW. CA is a byproduct, so we won't allocate any of the joint production cost to CA. And when we are allocating the cost, remember there are four different methods that can be used to allocate joint costs to joint products. And in this example, you are specifically told to use the net realizable value method. We are then also told that inventory is valued using the first in, first out method. And in the required, you need to calculate the gross profit for each of the joint products for May 20x4. All right, so before we can calculate the gross profit for each of the joint products, we obviously need to allocate the joint cost to the joint products, otherwise we don't know what portion of the joint cost relates to each product. And in this example, we have a byproduct. So before we can allocate the joint costs to the joint products, first we need to calculate the income that will be made from the sale of the byproduct. Because the income from the sale of the byproduct needs to be offset against the joint costs before the joint costs are allocated to the joint products. So let's first calculate the net income from the sale of the byproduct. All right, so obviously if we're trying to calculate net income, we need to take sales, deduct cost of sales, and that will leave us with net income. So how do we calculate the sales for the byproduct? We take the number of liters that were sold, and we multiply that by the selling price per liter. So you'll see the calculations on the next page. That's how we calculate the sales value for the byproducts. Then cost of sales is calculated by taking opening inventory, adding your production costs, and deducting closing inventory. Now remember, joint production costs are not allocated to byproducts. So the only production costs that we are going to have are the further processing costs. Remember, these further processing costs are incurred directly for the benefit of the byproduct. So the further processing costs will be allocated to the byproduct. We just don't allocate the joint production costs to the byproduct. So the byproduct didn't have any opening inventory. We then add our further processing costs, and once we have that information, we can then value closing inventory. Now, in this example, you were specifically told that inventory is valued using the first-in, first-out method. So if inventory is valued using the first-in, first-out method, we take the current production costs, we divide by our production volume, and we then multiply by the number of units in closing inventory. And in this example, we are working with liters, so we'll multiply by the liters in closing inventory. All right, so the current costs are the further processing costs. The production volume, they produced 250 liters of CA. And the number of liters in closing inventory, 60 liters. So that will then give you the value of closing inventory. You can then calculate cost of sales, and sales less cost of sales will leave you with net income. Now remember the reason why we've performed this calculation is because the net income from the sale of the byproduct must be offset against the joint production costs. So we take the joint production costs, which are 600,000 Rand, and we offset the net income from the sale of the byproduct. Then we are going to take this amount over here, and that amount needs to be allocated to our joint products. And remember, if you go back, in this question we were specifically told 
that the joint costs should be allocated using the net realizable value method. So how do we calculate the net realizable value? We take the sales value after further processing. We then deduct the cost to complete and sell the product. So in this example, that will be the further processing costs. And that will leave us with the estimated net realizable value at the split off point. Now, please be careful, guys. When you are calculating this sales value after further processing, this must be the sales value of production. Now, think about this logically. You can see the discussion just above. The purpose of this calculation is to allocate joint costs to products. And joint costs are based on production volumes, not sales volumes. So you should use production volumes to calculate sales values and not sales volumes. Remember, guys, we're not trying to ca calculate profit over here. A little bit later, we're going to calculate profit. And when we calculate profit, obviously, sales will be based on sales volumes. Right now, we are trying to allocate the joint costs to joint products. And because joint costs will be based on production volumes, we must use production volumes. So you'll see when we calculate the sales value over here, we take the selling price per liter and you multiply by your production volumes, not your sales volumes. So you are calculating the sales value of production after further processing. So you can see those calculations over there. Then we need to deduct the further processing costs. So the further processing costs are provided over there on your diagram, so you can just bring that forward. And that will give you the estimated net realizable value at the split off point. And that is how we are going to allocate the joint costs. So you can see we get a total here of 4 million. 2 million relates to SM and 2 million relates to BW. So if you calculate your percentages, 50% relates to SM and 50% relates to BW because both of them have exactly the same net realizable value at the split off point. So when we are now allocating our joint cost, and remember it's not the joint cost of 600,000 Rand, it's the joint cost after you have offset the net income from the sale of the bar product. We will allocate 50% of the joint cost to SM and 50% of the cost to BW. And we can now answer the required and calculate the gross profit for each of the joint products for May 20x4. So, we calculate gross profit by taking sales and deducting cost of sales. So, how do we calculate sales? We take the selling price per litre for each of your joint products. And now, obviously, we are performing a profit calculation, so you need to multiply by the number of litres sold. So that will give you your sales values over there. You can see the calculations are just below. Then we need to deduct cost of sales. And we calculate cost of sales first by taking opening inventory. Now if you go back to the information provided, opening inventory was given in RANDs. So you can just carry those amounts forward to your calculation. There's your opening inventory. Then we need to include our production costs. And we are now dealing with joint products. So we will have the joint production costs and also the further processing costs. The joint production costs obviously come from your previous calculation where we allocated 50% of the cost to SM and 50% of the cost to BW. So you can just bring those down. The further processing costs are a million rand for SM and 700,000 rand for BW. And we can then calculate the value of closing inventory. So remember guys, we are using the first in first out method which means we take our current costs 
we divide by the production volume and we multiply by the number of liters in closing inventory. Now, because we are dealing with our joint products, your current costs are made up of both the joint production costs and also the further processing costs. So let's first look at SN. You take your joint production costs plus your further processing costs, so that will give you your current costs. You then divide by your production volume, so 2,000 liters were produced, and you multiply by the number of liters in closing inventory. So for SM, there are 400 liters in closing inventory. All right, simple calculation. If we do the same thing for BW, you take your joint production costs plus the further processing costs. Those are your current costs. You then divide by production volume. So the production volume is 3,000 liters. And we are going to multiply by the number of liters in closing inventory, which is 500 liters. And that will give you the value of closing inventory. All right, and obviously sales minus cost of sales will give you your gross profit, and you have then answered the required. Then there's one more thing that I want to discuss with you. How would you value inventory if the weighted average method is used? Now remember guys, with the first in first out method, we take our current costs and we divide by production volume. So the only difference between the first in first out method and the weighted average method is with the weighted average method, we incorporate opening inventory in our calculation. So let's just highlight what's the same. And then you can see what the differences are. So with the first in first out method, we took our current costs, those current costs, and we divided by production volume. And we can do the same thing for BW. There's your current costs. And you divide by production volume. So the only difference if the weighted average method is used is we now incorporate opening inventory in the calculation. So the RAND value of opening inventory was provided in this question, but obviously the RAND value of your opening inventory is sitting over there. So now with the weighted average method, you are not only looking at current production costs, but you also include the value of opening inventory in your calculation. And obviously, if we are including the RAND value of opening inventory in the calculation, when we are dividing by the number of liters, you also need to include the liters in opening inventory in the calculation. So for SM, we had 200 liters in opening inventory, and for BW, 100 liters in opening inventory. So just include that in the calculation. You can see that is the only difference. After we've calculated the cost per liter, we then multiply by the liters in closing inventory. And we've then valued closing inventory. So the only difference between the weighted average method and the first in, first out method is with the weighted average method, we incorporate opening inventory in our calculation. All right, so please just make sure that you understand those differences.